In a previous lesson, I talked about how to make an interactive notebook. So now I want to talk about how do you create the text boxes. So if a student's given this, they need to click into these text boxes to type what their favorite things are. If I'm asking them to tell me about themselves, put their name in, what class they're in. So, but you see when I'm clicking here, I'm not moving any of, I can't move any of this other stuff. They can't change my Bitmoji. They can't move these boxes. So what am I going to do to make this where it is interactive, but they're not messing up what you've created? So let's look at this other interactive notebook. You see, if I give this one to my students, which is not finished, but this is the one I used for the first tutorial, they can move everything. So we want to make it to where they can't move it, but they can click to add text. So I'm going to go down to a slide where I've not already created this. And here you can see my journal page moves, my clicker moves. They, if I give this to students, they could move everything. And we know from teaching experience that if you give students free reign where they can mess with your stuff and change what you've worked so hard on, they may not do it intentionally, but then at some grade levels, they may do it intentionally. So we want to make sure to take that option away from them. So I've gone ahead and created my background is the shiplap for this whole thing. So to do that, just in case you don't know, um, you click on background or you can right click on the box. It doesn't matter. My image is already in there. And then I click add to theme. So anytime I add a new slide, that background's already going to be there. But I've already done that, so I don't need to do that step. Okay, so I've laid out my notebook for this page. So now what I'm going to do is I've clicked inside this page and I'm going to hit Control A or Command A if you're on a Mac and then Control X or Command X. And so what that has done is that's copied everything and erased everything because I don't, I don't need this stuff on the slide right now, but I do want to have it on my clipboard because I'm going to paste it somewhere else. So click on view in the top and you're going to click on master. So this is the master slide for this particular theme that I'm using, which I didn't select the theme. This is just a basic blank slide that I'm creating everything in. So I'm going to scroll down to a blank slide and you can see here where I've already done some of my journal pages like this. So I'm just going to go to the next one. It's okay if they're not in order because it's not linking it to the slide number or anything like that. So like I have my first table of contents here because my first table of contents is already finished. I've already filled up those pages but I don't have the next two done yet and I don't want to do this until I know everything is where I want it to be. Now, how I'm doing this is I'm creating it in Google Slides and then I'm copying it and pasting it into the master slide. You can absolutely just start at this view master slide and do everything you want to in this master slide without copying and pasting. That's completely up to you. So now that I'm inside this slide, I'm going to click in here and hit Command V or Control V if you're on a, on a PC. So now all of my journal is here in this book or on this slide, this master slide. So I'm going to make sure it's all lined up right where I want it. Mine's a little bit lower, so that looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to click off of this. So my journal page is set up. So now, so now, 
So now I want to add the text boxes. So this is what's really cool about the master slide is I can click on text box and put a placeholder. If you do title, it's going to be really big. Subtitle, it's going to be medium. I just want a body text. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to drag it right here. So now there's a text box here and it looks a little bit funky, but that's okay because I'm going to show you what it's going to look like for your students. So drag it up so you can make sure the first level is on that line. And then you want to control A or command A to select all of your text and change it if you want a particular font or a particular size, however you want it. And I want that down just a little bit. Okay, so that's my first text box. So now I'm just gonna click on it and control C, control V. So I'm just pasting it, copying and pasting it. Everywhere I need a text box for this. Same thing down here at the bottom. I'm gonna insert a text box. And I'm going to make a little one and control C, control V until I have it on every place that there needs to be a text. And it looks really bad right now. I know uh, if you're like me and you like things to look nice and clean, this is probably driving you crazy because it all looks like a hot mess. But you're going to see that students are not going to see this. It's going to look really good for the students. So now you see I didn't put anything up here. So what I want to do up here is I want to have a drag and drop using our inequality symbol. So I have everything set up. My clickers already had links on them. Um, but if you put a clicker in there, you want something that goes to an outsourced link. You can right click on whatever button, whatever image that you put in there. And you're going to insert your link or control K, command K. So I've got all this set up. So I'm going to exit out of here. And you see I have my blank slide. So I'm going to choose layout at the top. Find the blank page that we were just working on or the journal page we were just working on. Choose that layout. And now that's what we have. Now, sometimes if you have a smaller text box, it will look a little janky at the bottom. But now when your students see this, they just click on it and start typing, but they can't move all of this other stuff. So here they would, okay, so what's the absolute value of negative 70? They would click here and type 70 and you'll just need to tell them, you know, make your box a little bit wider if they need to, or even Whenever you're in the master slide, you can make that font smaller. So I want to change that because I don't want to leave that answer. Okay, so now for my inequality sim symbols, I want those to be a drag and drop. So I'm going to insert image and search the web and transparent less than sign is what I'm going to search for. And I'm just going to drag this over and make it smaller way smaller because it needs to fit on this little line. So see how small you need it to be. So that's good. But I don't want it there because I want them to drag and drop. So I'm going to copy and paste that a few times. So they have that. And then Really, you can flip that to have a greater than sign and line all these up and tell your students. You can have a little text box here that says what you want them to do with that. So I've got an equal sign here, but I'm going to do the same thing. And so what's going to happen? 
So I have my less than, my greater than, and my equal to signs over here. So now what I'm going to do is when I send this out to my students, because I did this just here in the slides and not in the master slide, they can move that. So they can click on the less than and move it over here. But because I have duplicated that three times, however many times you need to make sure um, that you have as many less than or greater than signs as you need. So I could, they can move this and answer the journal notes by just dragging where their inequality symbol needs to go. So they can take, they can type their text in it. They can move their inequality symbols. When they click on their links, they're not working. That's because they need to be in presentation mode. Click on the link and then it will take them to their practice. So those are some things that you need to troubleshoot with your kids. Let your kids know, hey, this is what I want you to do when you're working on this interactive notebook. Um, one more thing with the interactive notebook, whenever you're doing slides for the master slide, I've got a blank slide. I'm going to delete the text boxes. Go to master slide just to show you another thing that you can do with this. Go to one of the blank slides and you can create a Venn diagram or really any graphic organizer. So if you hit shift, it'll make a perfect circle. And I want to fill in, let's say, yellow, but I want it to be transparent. So I'm going to come to my custom and make it transparent. And then I'm going to duplicate that. And you'll see this red line pops up that shows me they are in line together. Change the color. And I want that one to be transparent. So go down to custom. Make it transparent as well. And then add your text boxes. Just like we did earlier. So we've got a text box here. I'm going to copy and paste that for the text box here. And you can line them up at the top. And then I need a text box for the middle. And you can make that one a little bit smaller. And so then you go to layout, put that Venn diagram in there, and now your kids can type right in there. So just one more way of how you can use this master slide. You can use it for graphic organizers. You can create your worksheets here in slides with using the master slide. If you do that, you do want to change your page layout, your page setup to eight and a half by 11 or 11 by eight and a half, depending on if you want landscape or portrait. So yeah, lots of things that you can do with Google Slides and use this master slide. You can make it where the kids can edit it, but make sure when you upload it to Google Classroom that you make a copy for each student so that they're not messing up anyone else's stuff. Now that you've made it where they can't mess up your work, you want to make sure you make it where they can't mess up other people's work as well. Thanks for watching, guys.